Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for the Pastel Society of Southern California Make Your Mark, uh, second annual, that is, uh, Make Your Mark Award announcement. So I, uh, I appreciate everyone being here, especially uh, <laughs> from all the places you're coming in, from New Zealand and, uh, and where else we have, from Malaysia. So um, I know we have different time zones, and so uh, some of you are really up early, or some of you are up late. So it's really appreciated that you're here uh, to join us for our announcement. Um, I am Otto Sterk. I am the current president of the Pastel Society of Southern California, and it is my honor to uh, announce the awards of this year's uh, winners. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we get started, I am. Um, with the announcements, I, I really want to acknowledge our three international judges. This is the first year that we have international judges, and uh, we want to we want to give a huge thanks to Isabel B. Lim from Hong Kong. Yeah, there you go. We can clap. <laughs> we have uh, we have Diana Ponting from Canada. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and mute all. All right. So. Uh, again, I want to thank Isabel V. Lim from Hong Kong. I want to thank uh, Diana Ponting from Canada. And I want to thank uh, Neil O'Neill from Ireland. Originally, I said he was from France, but uh, the thing is, he spent so much time in France, he says it's, it's, he understands uh, the mistakes. So he's, he's from Ireland. Um, so we thank them for, uh, for during in our pieces. There were 364 entries. Uh, and it was whittled down to 145. Of those 145, there were 15 awards, so roughly about 10%. So it was a tough show, uh, just to let you know. Um, the judges were really thrilled with what they saw, and um, we don't have categories at this time. As we grow, it's very possible we'll have that in the future, and we may have a best of show in the future as well. Uh, because we don't have categories, first place is top dog. And uh, so, um, again, it was a tough show to judge. And uh, the, the uh, judge, excuse me, the, the jurors were thrilled with the work that was presented. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the PSSC board for their hard work in, uh, in putting the show together for you. Uh, I want to give special thanks to our VP of Exhibitions, Chris Stillian. Who and and our VP of Communications, Lynn Attic, who have been doing an outstanding job keeping everything together, um, and especially my sanity. So thank you so much uh, for doing that. Um, it takes a lot of work uh, to put a show together like this, and um, it's really appreciated. Um, so I said we had uh, 364 entries, uh, and 145 were jury in. Now. Um, we do, we do have uh, two different types of prizes. We have cash prizes and we have product prizes. And because of that, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, which are Holbein, Richardson Art, Dakota Art Pastel, Art Spectrum, distributed by uh, Armadillo Art and Craft out of Bell Mead in New Jersey. Uh, we have a sponsored prize from Red Rock Pastel Society of Nevada. Uh, we also have York and international artists who sponsor some prizes. So we want to give them a huge thanks for sponsoring our show. Uh, we like to start the uh, announcements with a statement from our judge, Lorenzo Chavez. And I want, so I'm going to go, go ahead and switch to uh, my screen for just a second. So uh, I'll give you, once I share my screen, I'll give you a, a minute here to adjust in case things get moved around on your screen. So give me just a sec. All right. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yeah? Okay. So, Lorenzo Chavez. When I did a show, I'm searching for paintings that grab me emotionally. Do I feel a mood or get a thrill? I then looked to see if it was well-designed and, and if there was masterful draftsmanship. Are there interesting shapes, edges, values, patterns, line movement, intriguing color harmonies? And finally, I want to feel that the artist was passionate about the subject and painted it with conviction. As I looked at the images submitted, there were paintings that gained in strength with each study. They had unique styles, 
strong design, simple concepts, and I felt the artist's love of the concept and love for the pastel medium. I always enjoy a painting that conveys a feeling that the artist is painting what they love. I am honored and incredibly grateful to have been able to serve as a judge for this exhibition. The overall quality was extremely high. The exhibition is outstanding. I wish you all tremendous success and look forward to seeing what the future holds for this fine group and the future of the pastel medium. Keep up the interesting uh, creativity going. Keep trying to grow as artists. We all win if we keep painting and striving. Much love and, and success to you all. Sincerely, Dorando Chavez. So we thank him for his statement. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, all right, well, we are now going into our announcement. All right, so um, Becky Johnson is being awarded the Art Spectrum Armadillo Art and Craft uh, award, and that is a pad of 12 sheets of cool paper valued at $60. So congratulations, Becky Johnson. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. I love this piece. And um, I, unfortunately, it's, it's not for sale. I noticed that. It really is a really beautiful piece. Um, so congratulations, Becky Johnson. So, all right, congratulations, Andrew. Um, this is a UART sponsored uh, award. Um, and it's also international international artist sponsored award it's a gift certificate valued at 88 dollars congratulations andrew mcdermott uh, on this beautiful piece titled creating patterns moving up and our next award is our pan pastel sponsored award it's a gift certificate for 100 dollars and that goes to carol peebles Carol Peebles for Quarantine Roommates, number two. Congratulations, Carol. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving up. Uh, our next award goes to, well, actually, our next award is our Richardson Art Sponsored uh, Award. It's a gift certificate for $100. And that goes to Barbara Groff for her piece, China Blue. Congratulations, Barbara. Okay, moving up. Uh, we are at 11th place. Red. Oh, this is a Red Rock Pastel Society of Nova Nevada sponsored award for $100 cash. And that goes to Mary, am I pronouncing that right? Rendell Smith for Bragg Hill Bounty. Congratulations. Moving up. Our next award is an ampersand sponsored award. It is seven 11 by 14 pastel boards valued at $105. And that award goes to Frederick Summers for his piece held in radiance. Congratulations, Fred Frederick. Moving up, our next award is a Richardson Art Sponsored Award. It's a gift certificate for $125. And that goes to Kathy Hildebrandt for Hit the Road, Jack. <laughs> All right, our next award is an Art Spectrum Armadillo Art and Craft Award. It is an Art Spectrum Extra Soft Temperate Landscape Square Pastel set of 20. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Um, it is valued at $147. And that award goes to Jane Hilton for Duraville Light. Our next award goes is a Dakota Art Sponsored Award. It is a Dakota Pouchot Box valued at $150. And that award goes to Glenn Maxian for Summer Effervescence. Congratulations, Glenn. Uh, our next award is a Richardson Art Sponsored Award. It's a gift certificate for $150. And that award goes to BF Reed, Spheres 2. Congratulations, BF, all the way from North Carolina. All right, 
So congratulations to those winners. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. We'll get some reactions. And then the next, the top five will be announced via Lorenzo Chavez's video, which you can see uh, in about another hour or two on YouTube. And I'll be posting it onto our website as well. So give me just a sec to stop sharing the screen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Yay. well, congratulations to everyone. Yeah. Congratulations to everybody. Yay. Awesome. You the work. Wow, 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 wow. That was, uh, that was amazing work. So congratulations to everybody. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to go ahead and take my AirPod off. Otherwise, you won't be able to listen to the video. Um, and let me put that together for you. Sorry again for those glitches. Sometimes when I run Zoom, it wants to do its own thing. So my apologies. Was it, um, Again, if, if you weren't able to see all of the winners, you can go ahead and see the Lorenzo Chavez video along with this video in a couple hours. As soon as it's formatted, I can get it up for you um, on our website and on our uh, YouTube channel. So uh, I'll give you details for that in just a moment. So congratulations to everybody for all the winners. Um, Thank you. All right. All right. So now, uh, let me go ahead and pull this up now. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to mute everyone now just to let you know this video uh goes into the goes into uh discussing the five top pieces uh so it's about 28 minutes long just to let you know um so i will pay i'm going to mute everybody i'll play the video and then we'll all come back at the end of the video okay everybody good all right so i'm going to mute everyone at this moment and i'm going to share the video we should maybe uh, talk about the uh, five uh, top awarded uh, images, maybe starting with the fifth uh, place. Uh, yeah. What do you thoughts about that? Let's talk yeah. about that. So, sure. so what we'll do is uh, give me a second. I'm going to share, uh, share my screen here. And we're going to go through uh, the images of the, uh, your top five picks, Michael. And okay, sounds great. Uh, all right, so here we go. This is a... Uh, uh, this is, and I'll probably and give you just let me pull my award sheet up here. Uh, this one is uh, specifically uh, the Holbein sponsored award. And uh, this piece, well, I'll let you go ahead, uh, Reza. Well, I, yeah, congratulations to Pamela Cook. It's a fine work. It, you know, it, as, as happens with a lot of the works that sort of uh, become the upper award winners. As you're looking at the body of work, there's elements that make it stand out uh, kind of in the crowd. Um, and uh, if we go back to the visual elements we talk about, you know, look at the three, look at the big, if you squint your eyes and you look at the three dark rocks, the three main rocks, you know, just on a pure pictorial design, there's three unique shapes. Um, I like to say the shapes are unique and specific. You definitely sense them. You see them, there's a wonderful placement of all of them. So there's a nice variety in where they sit in the picture plane. Uh, that sort of drew me in. It's, it's a very graphic piece. I like the idea of looking down on the subject and then sort of seeing it almost as a, you know, if you looked at it as an abstract expressionist painting, it's got those qualities, yet it's got a representational idea, right? The rocks and the water and the flow, but there's so much beautiful energy to this. Um, I found that it had a great spirit to it. You know, I sense the artist just had a ball doing it, you know? And I love that. I love, just like, you know, when we see a musician playing a guitar and they're just having a ball, you just, you just love it, right? You can, I can sense the artist just having a grand time painting and, and, but, you know, if we look at even the, the areas in the water, so you got the white foam of the water, but then the sort of lighter gray areas. If you start to look at the individual shapes, there's variety in each one. I mean, that, that takes a lot of mental uh, adjusting and skill to, to keep that variety fresh and, and yet have that variety be present. Um, so that, that was one of the outstanding qualities of this work. Uh, the, other, the other thing that really stood out was I love that you know, they use a sort of gray-green color harmony to hold it all together. You know, if you look at 
the greens. You know, just this goes to the color area of the visual language. Just start looking at the variety of greens, from cool greens to warm greens. And there's a beautiful, they're very subtly done, but there's a beautiful uh, harmony that it holds everything together with their with the color palette. Um, you see, I, I yeah, I, I think it's it's got a poetic quality to it, and I just felt it was a very strong and unique kind of vision of this this subject. So, congratulations, Pamela yeah. Cook. Way to go! Congratulations, Pamela. All right, we could have gone fish in there. Was yeah, that that's exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we've got the, our next award is our uh, Isabel V. Lim uh, Henri Award. Uh, she was uh, one of our uh, international jurors. And uh, let me pull the image up here for you. Uh, just a quick second. And, um, and this award goes to none other than Carol Peebles. Fantastic work. C congratulations, Carol. What a, what a beautiful piece. Uh, this, this piece, uh, again, you know, just I, I like the pictorial idea of it, the, 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 the figure that the, the young girl looking away from us, which is daring, you know, looking at, uh, uh, somewhere else. Definitely something's on her mind. You, you get these, you know, we start to interject our own ideas in it. Uh, and that's always wonderful when, when your mind sort of travels and starts to create a, a story. Uh, but, on, but, you know, when we start to dissect what, what she's done here, you know, if you look at the overall value relationship, she's kept a very close value uh, the, uh, relationship going. The values are really highly close to one another. There's some separation, but if you squint down, they sort of almost blend into one another, except if you look at the face, which is lighter in value, that edge stands out strongly against all the other edges. If you squint down, this is what you want to do. So one thing I do a lot in my workshops is I have people say, squint down at the subject, start looking at the contrast of light and dark. So you really see where she wanted your eye to go with that contrast, but the other values are more closely related, so there's that your eye tends to go right to her face, uh, just in terms of value. Uh, her color palette, very muted. Uh, it has a very subtle shifts of colors, but they're, they all relate, so there's a beautiful relationship of color harmony throughout the whole painting. Uh, but one of the fun things I found is once I start to study the edge quality, if you follow the figure from, say, the back, Mm -hmm. the, the lower back on the right side of the painting, just follow that line up along the edge and then go into the hair and then compare the value of the back to the hair and then look at what happens with the edge quality there. There's a beautiful transition of soft edges which gives a nice contrast to that hard edge uh, and then you follow the hairline, it's very soft and then you come around to where the face is and get into the eyes. And then you hit another hard edge right around her eyes, her nose, her lips, very sharp edge with a lot of contrast. And if you follow that down, again, you go towards the left side of the painting and the edge there at the bottom left, you notice she darkened the value. So the value of the edge is very, the value of the background is very close to the value of her 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 top her about her blouse. So if you squint down, it almost disappears, which another which is a beautiful another way of controlling value, right? By putting two close values together, you lose an edge, or the softening of the edge next to a hard edge creates another beautiful edge. So just a masterful quality of edge control in this piece. So uh, bravo, Carol! Just beautiful work. Well, and uh, moving on to uh, our third place award, which is our uh, PSSC uh, Sponsored Cash Award. Uh, and that award goes to... Man, I know, this is going to be a tough one for us to pronounce. Yeah. Right? So we each have our, our take on uh, okay. anyway, I'll let you go first. <laughs> I'll let you go first. But the award goes uh, to... Uh, uh, to taking a break, and uh, and I think 
and please forgive us if, if we if we pronounce correctly, but I believe it's Gael or or Gael. Yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah, that that sounds right. We'll have to ask her. <laughs> yeah, but, it's a beautiful yeah. piece. It's a, yeah, it's a beautiful piece. So please, please, please forgive us if if we mispronounced her name. Um, and and again, I'll let you uh, go ahead, Lorenzo, and and, and uh, give us your take on on, on this piece. Yes, well, for the uh, I, I just, I, right away, this hit me. It's a strong work with a lot of spirit, a lot of love to the subject. I, I sense her deep love to the subject. You just sense it in the, the eyes, you know, just, just in terms of, because we tip, typically come to as a, a, a representational subject with the pictorial idea, right? The, what is the imagery about? Uh, and it's powerful in that regard. You know, it's, it's, uh, uh, we've been watching my son's cats the last, during this COVID, and so we have the cats around, remember we don't, so it definitely struck a chord there too, and we've had cats in the past, so there's probably some of that coming out, but, but in terms of pure technical mastery, you know, look at her bold, confident mark making, I mean, there is some guts there. Yeah, bam, bam. There's there's some pure joy and guts and positivity in her mark making, uh, which creates this representational object. But the the it's almost got an abstract expressionist uh, life to it. This quality of the dark light shape, you know, the color harmony, that sort of red green color palette, which is you know, everything in a harmonic of beauty, um, and then of course contrast. Well, she's taking you on the extreme journey of the darkest art to the lightest art. And artists can do that whole range and still there's a cohesive whole. Um, she's got, uh, you know, again, if you if we look at the edge quality, I remember we're going back to that idea of the visual language. So there's always those key elements. Uh, if we squint our eyes at the you know, and I'm squinting at the screen as I look at this. I would squint at the originals if I was there. But you start to see the dark background on the right side just sort of melt into the 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 head of the cat. Mm -hmm. You know, you just sort of just disappears into the background or comes out of the dark background. It's a beautiful beautiful transition of nice edge control, very softly translate transition. From one dark extreme into that bit of bright contrasting color around the cat's mouth and the, the, the neck and the top. There's some beautiful, strong marks that very differently she knows her anatomy and the, uh, the characteristics of the, the way the mark should be placed that suggests the anatomy. Um, let's see, I wrote down she's got, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely bold and confident work. Uh, and you look at, if, if we follow the top edge of the cat, as you go, you see this red square, and it stands out, it jumps out, but if you squint your eyes down, yeah, yeah, you almost see it just blends into the background. That edge is beautifully handled. With, it's a change of, it's a, it's a color change, and, a, and the value is very close to the black. So pictorially you sort of just almost glance past the red but yet it holds you in in a powerful way as well uh, and then if you follow the edge of the back of the cat the flying legs are i mean she goes into pure abstract expression of that so definitely uh one of my favorite artists nikolai fashion who was a russian artist who came to america did this a lot where he had areas of extreme detail with abstraction and she does a beautiful job with this you, you get that the, the forward paw is described but look at the paw behind it. it's purely abstract so it really allows the viewer to kind of finish the painting which which is which is fun to do um, so you know bravo to you Kale. Uh, congratulations I, 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 I agree I believe I mean it's just stunning how she fuses the background you know to the the subject itself and one one merges with the other and I, I love that. I love that. Okay. Isn't, that isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's, it's 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 very evident when you squint down it sort of just falls back.
beautifully. <laughs> and, and what minimal strokes uses to create the nose and the mouth structure. Now, one eye is just, just looks like it's just a stroke of black, but it's just so, so believable. It's just a, exactly, yeah. I mean, it looked like it took her, you know. 20 minutes to paint it, but I know that I like, took a lifetime to get to that point, you know, but she, she's definitely a poet with her art making. Uh, yeah, wonderful work. Yeah, beautiful work, yeah. I, uh, I, I laugh because it takes me like 20 years to finish a piece, but... Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, well, uh, moving, up, moving up, uh, in second place, uh, in second place, uh, another strength piece, um, it is... Oh, once again, yes, which I'm sure this is going to be very, very happy. Um, yeah. Please give us uh, please let us know which, why, why, why uh, this piece now, it, it, it's, it's a stunning piece. Uh, uh, but I want, I'm curious because, you know, we, 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 we see uh, several artists uh, in, in different shows win a couple of pieces. And tell us why, and, and not, I, I just want, want to hear your take because it's, Crazy, crazy pieces, and this is where I'd like to get that as to was uh, this one where these this piece was definitely the top contention. De definitely, it hit in, in a very strong way, and you know, it's obviously very, very poignant to so his historical piece as well. Um, and I, you know, hats off to Carol for that. That that takes bravery, and I think that's a, a just. But but what a tour de force in terms of the artistry behind it. You know, I mean, the subject alone is is very moving and captivating. You know, but then it's it's handled in a masterful way. So so you can focus on the subject and less on the the way it's it's handled. But uh, as artists, you know, we all want to kind of deconstruct and find out how this is put together so uh, the notes I wrote on her is it's 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 definitely uh, it's a bold statement you know uh, bold in both because it relates even her her title I think there's you know titles can have a powerful presence to it and the title of this work has a it's a strong title she picked for it but uh, it's a bold statement and uh, you know we're all going to come to it in our own way how we see that statement, but it's definitely there. There's a bold statement for us to sort of let ourselves immerse ourselves in that and, and the ideas behind it. Uh, technically, you know, pow that red against the the dark uh, stop stoplight, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, traffic light. That just like. Bow, <laughs> bam, you know, it's, it, she's hitting the drums hard, wham, you know, she definitely is drawing your attention with that contrast of sharp edges, you know, if you look at the, if you look at the left side of the, the stoplight, you know, the shapes, really strong, hard edges compared to, if you keep going down that line of the gentleman's shoulder, you know, on the left side, down his arm, and then just before it leaves the page, how it just softens, that edge just disappears. So she definitely is controlling where she wants us to look, both in terms of contrast uh, and in terms of color, the shock of that red against that cool background, that cool gray background. So there's a shock in temperature right there. Um, but then there's also, look at the left side of the figure. Uh, if you follow the, from the, stoplight, the red light on the top of the gentleman's head, where it's a, it's a light value, but if you squinted it, that value kind of almost starts to disappear a little bit into the background until you get to the dark area of his head. And boy, that is a sharp, sharp line. You know, compared to every other line, it, I think it might be sharper than this the stop sign on the left side. Yeah. And I look at it, my eye just, and I thought that was very daring to put it on someone's back of their head as opposed to the front, you know, because typically that's what you'll see. You know, Rembrandt in his portraits, he would have added a really strong edge, right? A lot like the collar, he would have made it really bright and that contrast with a sharp edge and 
but it usually was right around where the main area of the face was. Here she chose the sharpest edge right in the, on the back of the head. So there's a, that's a powerful way of visually moving you around. Yeah. Um, and, and then you go into, you know, so just a strong graphic design. Uh, and uh, what I'm looking at now, which I didn't, I wasn't able to see on the uh, online was the size of the work. So this is really fun to now see what the sizes are. And at, eight, at 24 by 18, that's going to be an impressive piece in life, uh, size-wise. Uh, but uh, if you start to go into now the artistry and the art mark making, you know, look look at the way she handled the back, those marks, uh, you know, those those mark making. I, I, I like to think of them as calligraphy, you know, the the way you can just, you can sense the spirit of the artist and the marks being placed in the back, you know, just carefully thought out and placed very confidently, but very thoughtfully. And and that's beautiful when you see that, you see the confidence of the artist coming through, the, the assuredness of their medium, uh, and those all add to that quality. Um, Look at the wonderful halo, halation she has. If you look at the shoulders, above the shoulders and in the back of the head, she's got this halation, that glowing light, which is a beautiful transition of color from, from the dark value to the warm halation to the cool background. Just a, it's a subtle, subtle thing, but really masterfully done. So. Uh, and then I, I love how she put in the telephone poles, and they were done very uh, loosely, very casually, very you know, uh, almost almost uh, obviously she wanted them to sit in the background, so they don't they don't compete with anything in the main subject. But but I like how she just sort of toyed with that. So it's all very sketchy look against the very highly finished look of the head. So, you know, Matt, just, just a tour de force. It, you know, uh, yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I just, as you mentioned, the, the part line on the back of his head. And yes. one, one of the first things I noticed about this piece um, when I saw it was that she, she used uh, a method that many classical artists use was to, to use these bold, dark shapes to give more form to that that they wanted the viewer to look at. Yeah. And so, you know, you look at the back of the head and how hard that is, and you see that stuff like that bold uh, shape, and, and look how much form it gives to that, that gesture in, the, in, in his face, you know, just oh. so much more form. So it's almost like yeah. a placeholder, look at me, you know, and uh, I just thought that was stuff. That is amazing. Yeah, and it's yeah. You can compare this to some of the old masters' works, and yeah, you see those qualities come through. So it's it's fun to compare it. You know what? But yet, it's definitely a, a painting of our times. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, congratulations, Carol. You just you know knocking when, when the are, Winner, winner of this year's uh, two two top awards uh, for this exhibition. Two two top awards. So congratulations to Carol. That's a yes. noble piece. Of well, we have come up to our last, uh, other, by the way, that was also a uh, ESCO Society of Southern California sponsored award, uh, and we're proud to give it to Carol Peoples for such a stunning piece. Um, and for our last award, uh, our first and our, our top winner, uh, we don't have a best of shows, so we don't have different categories, uh, but uh, so this is our, 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 top, our top dog here, so to speak. Great, great. So congratulations to Great yeah. Yay. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, this this is one of those two. Like I, I think I, I mailed you a juror statement. One of the things I when I look at a show, I I look at all the work over and over again. There's just works that continually just seem to get stronger each time you view it. You know, and that's one of the qualities you look for. Just it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. This is one that uh, it seems like a very simple concept, right? But when you put it together as a whole, one that's sort of looking down on the object, uh, the the use of repetition of, of circular forms to kind of move the viewer around, 
is wonderfully handled. And I, and I love also, I don't know if the rim of the bowl was actually red or she changed the color to kind of harmonize with the uh, persimmons, right? Uh, but they, it, it just whole, ties together beautifully. So let's, let's go in again to those visual elements. So if we, let's just look in terms of pure line. So if we follow the branch from the right side of the painting in, you know, to me that it allowed the viewer to kind of enter the painting through that area, you know, uh, and go into the interior of the bowl. And then the branch sort of took you into the center of the painting. But I love the way she continued the branch out to the edge of the bowl and just, you could see the main branch, she just barely overlapped it. You know, too much more, and it might have shot your eye out of the painting. You know, but she just, just enough to like give it that little edge over the, the bowl, but to keep you following that line. So if you follow that branch and then start to follow the line of the um, outer bowl, that red circle, and I love the way it sort of leaves the pictorial look space and then comes back into it and then leaves it, comes back in, leaves it, you know, on the right side and then on the left side, she's kept it completely inside the pictorial image, you know, the outer four edges of the painting. Beautifully handled, just my eye kept moving around. It's a beautiful color relationship of reds and greens, as well as warm and cool colors. Uh, now, if we start to look at the edge quality, look at the what she did with the cast shadow in the bowl, and just follow one of the things we did in art school that we used to when we did life drawing is our teacher said when you're doing we used to go with these line drawings where you would start kind of put your pencil on the paper and follow the form with your eye, follow the figure with your eye, and then just leave your hand on the drawing board or drawing paper and just continue to follow the form visually and just kind of let your hand move along the outer form. Is that making sense? Yeah. Uh, what, what the way he described, our teacher described it, he says, you want to imagine you're a little bug on the figure and you're just walking along the edge of that form. So if you do that, if you imagine you're just sort of walking along that edge of the cast shadow, and then you start to really become very highly aware of how she's treated the edge quality, where she went soft, you know, as it gets closer to the edge on the left side, where she lost the edge on the upper right side. So she really contains the viewer with that contrast of edge control, uh, both in the cast shadow, but also within the persimmons. You know, there's beautiful hard edges, especially that one that is the furthest to the right side, and it's got that bit of bright light and sharp cast shadow on it. See which one we're talking yeah. about? That, that has got to be one of the strong edges are you, there. Are you speaking of, of, of this one? Yeah, that area there. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Yeah. So, I want to do that. I want to get to that. No, that's perfect. That's what I would probably do. I used to do that with the laser pointer in the workshops when, you know, when we looked at slides. but. Uh, but then you look at the other light and shadow areas of the other persimmons and look at the edge quality there. And it's, they're beautiful edges, but there's a, there's a definite sort of dominance of which edge is more prominent in this piece. So she, she's always, always in command of where she's directing the viewer to go. And yet uh, the shape, the circle keeps you moving around, the branch moves you around. And then what I love, if you just look at the circular shapes, the oval shapes, you take each one and you look at the turning of the persimmon, each shape has a uniqueness to it. You know, so carefully, she's never, she's not, she's repeating shape, but not. You know, she's, she's doing a beautiful job of making each shape similar but different at the same time, which is hard to do, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I like the way the shadow mimics the actual branch, you know, the shape and direction of it. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I just noticed that now. Thanks for pointing out because yeah, that's beautiful. The way that brings you around. Well, look, there's, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, if you look, there really is a lot of repetition. There's, 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 you know, so it's, 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 it's bringing you back around. But, you know, if, if there's, if the, you look at the reds and the oranges and, and even within the shadows and, and, you know, the beautiful silver green tones. I mean, you know, it's just, it, it, again, it, it's, it's a wonderful piece. Um, yes. And, uh, you know, congratulations to, to Mary, Terry McMurray. We're, we're really proud to have sponsored this uh, $1,000 cash prize. Uh, That's so fantastic. I, I, you know, I hope she enjoys it and, and uh, we're really excited that, uh, that she won this, this piece. So okay. if, 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 did you want, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Was there something else you wanted? Back. All right, everyone, congratulations. Can you hear me? Yeah? Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, if everyone wants to see the whole video, <clears throat> you get to see some history on on Lorenzo Chavez and how he got into pastels, and 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 so it, it's about an hour long video that I'll be posting on both our YouTube channel and our uh, website. So, our website again is uh, pssewebsite.org. Pssewebsite.org. You can find the link there. To YouTube as well. Look at one of the widgets on the bottom. Um, what I do want to say, and I want to highlight Carol Evels. So I'm going to go ahead and spotlight Carol. <laughs> How you doing, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just want to say that this is history for me. This is uh, the first time we've had a new artist with three pieces in the show. That is spectacular. That's amazing. So congratulations. Do you want to say anything? How do you feel? I'm just. I woke up depressed this morning, so now I'm just so happy. I can't stand it, and I feel so so honored. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very, very, very welcome. Uh, so I, uh, I just we're, we're really, just we're just really like happy that, that you got humble it. and sweet. Three pieces accepted, and, and on top of that, you won two of the top five. So congratulations! We're so happy to have sponsored two of those prizes. So we hope it makes your day. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Everyone who entered into this show, who got dreaded into this show, it was it was tough. It was tough, and um, you know it it it, uh, it was really a remarkable, spectacular show. So congratulations. Um, <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, and so uh, I I do want to say that um, uh, I, you know what? Actually, I do. Since if you have, if anyone has their their meat ready, I'd like to make a toast to Carol Peebles and to all. <laughs> sure. So, Toast yes, yes. for joining us, and thank you, thank you uh, for being here and and uh, for this award announcement. It makes us very happy. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, I'm gonna spotlight. I'm gonna spotlight. Here we go. Oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to let everybody know that the YouTube channel is Pastel Society of Southern California. So if you go to YouTube and search, you'll find it. And we can get a dedicated channel with 100 subscribers. We're getting close. So if you could go there and then subscribe to the Pastel Society of Southern California, we're going to be putting up more content, especially as we're in isolation. We can, if you have content you would like to put up, Carol, or any of the other award winners, if you want to show us a little bit about your process, please send us a little video and Otto can put that up there. We want all of our um, communications tools to be interactive. Um, Otto and the board have done a fantastic job with our new website. We'll be sending <laughs> newsletters from the new website. So we're just glad that we have an international audience and um, Zoom allows us to interact with all of you in, in real time, one time. Thank you so much, everyone. Congratulations. Thank, um, thank you. We're, we're going through a tough time and it makes me Happy. I'm really overjoyed um, by the fact that all of you have have been creating. Get to see your artwork online in some form or another. I wish I could stand in front of your pieces, but it makes me happy to see all of your work on all the different social media platforms. Um, so stay creative, um, or at least try to stay creative um, during this tough time. We'll see each other again. We'll get to hug each other. One, you know, soon enough, hopefully, and. Uh, and congratulations to everybody. That was really a spectacular show. You can see our show on online jury uh, shows. It's been up since 
uh, August 1st, uh, as of last Saturday. So if you haven't seen it yet, go to online jury shows, look at PSSC, publish show, and you'll see it there. We also provide a link on our website, uh, again, pssewebsite.org. If you have any questions regarding our society, we'd love for you to communicate to us. It's, uh, our, our website is, is info at pssewebsite.org. Um, if you'd like to join our society, it's $3 a year. We'd love to have you. And if I'm missing anything or if I didn't thank anyone, I'm sorry because there are so many people behind all of this. So, again, congratulations, everybody. Thank you for joining. This will be up in two hours if you'd like to see it. Um, it's just going to take a little time to format. So, thank you very much. Would anybody like to say anything? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for all your hard work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Going with the Pastel Society. I love this. Thank love you. it. Thank you, everyone. I, uh, I, I look forward to seeing you once again. Everybody did some amazing work. And like I said, I, I, I couldn't be happier with, with, with the work that everybody put in. It's truly a spectacular. So. But off to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go to bed, everybody. Who's up. everyone. <laughs> go to bed. Or, or, Bye. Or, 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 Bye. Thank you, everyone. We're going to end this meeting now. So, bye. Bye from the Netherlands. Bye. Wait, wait, wait. Say cheese. 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 All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. 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 bye.